What's up guys? In this video, what I want to do is handle the top mistakes that I see students make with fractions. And again, it doesn't matter if you are algebra one or in calculus, I see students make these mistakes time and time again. So I figured I had to go over a video and just go back over and explain what mistakes you are making as well as how to correct them. Let's go ahead and take a look at these mistakes and hopefully get a better understanding of how they happen so we don't make them again. So one of the first mistakes I see students dealing with fractions is going to be when you have your denominator separated by two different terms. So for instance, if I had like a divided by b plus c, what a lot of students will want to do is they can say, oh, well, we can go ahead and separate my B and my C all over A. So let's say, oh, that could be a, written as a A over B plus a A over C. And no, that cannot work. And I think one of the easiest ways to be able to understand why this does not work is just to replace variables with numbers. A lot of times when we're just working with variables, we kind of forget our rules. So let's use some numbers to try to make some sense of exactly what we're doing. So let's pretend I had a nine over, let's make this a six plus a three, right? Again, they're all different numbers, just like for my variables. So if we were gonna go ahead and simplify this, we could easily just add our denominators, six plus three is nine, right? And that would give us a nine over nine, which is just gonna equal one. However, if we use the logic of the mistake up here, what we simply would have done is we would have said, okay, well then that you can separate this to a nine over six, plus a nine over three. And again, if you kind of do the work, a nine over six is a three halves, right? Which is 1.5 plus a nine over three, which is three. You can see that's gonna be like a four and a half, which is definitely not one. So just be very careful when you have denominators separated by addition and subtraction, we cannot separate them into two different fractions. Okay, the next mistake is gonna happen when we have a binomial again in the denominator. So in this case, I'll have a divided by an a plus b. Now again, a lot of students see an a in the numerator and a in the denominator, and they say, oh, those are gonna go ahead and divide out. That's gonna equal a one over b. Well, no, that is not correct. Now you are correct in the division property, right? And whenever you have a term, a number or an expression divided by itself, that is going to equal one. That is good. That is correct. However, the problem here, it comes into our denominator is again, our two terms in our denominator are separated by addition and subtraction. So we cannot apply the division property when things are separated by addition or subtraction. Again, let's just go back and use some numbers to kind of make some sense of this. If I had a three divided by a three plus one, right? Now, again, we can simply say, well, why don't we just add the denominators, right? So a three plus one, that's going to equal four. So therefore you can see this answer is going to be a three fourths, right? Very well. However, if you kind of follow the logic of what you would have done here, you would have like divided them out, right? You would have divided out your A's. That's how we got one. So therefore, if you divide out the threes, then you get a one over one, right? Which is just equal to one, which again is not going to be the case. So please do not go ahead and divide out your terms like this. Don't do that. There's really nothing else we can do to simplify this unless our terms aren't denominator can be combined. So what about when we are combining our fractions? Let's say we have a one over A plus a one over B. What is the biggest thing that students want to do? They say, oh, well, we know we need to add our numerators, right? And let's just go ahead and add our denominator. So the biggest mistake I see students make is they'll say one plus one is two all over an A plus B, which is going to be an A plus a B, which again, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, is not going to work. And you know, a lot of times students like to make this mistake is because they don't want to go through the work of finding a common denominator. And again, just to kind of make sure, let's just see one half plus a one third, you actually need to go ahead and rewrite those using common denominators. So that that is going to be equal to a three over six plus a two over six. Again, notice what I did is I just rewrote each of these fractions with a denominator of six. One half is equivalent to three over six. One third is equivalent to a two over six. And basically what I did is I just multiplied a three over three on this fraction and a two over two on this fraction. That's what gave me my common denominator of six. And now I basically just apply my operation in my numerator and I leave the denominator the same. So three plus two is going to be a five all over a six. However, it's very important to remember, please don't go ahead and add this up. The answer is five or six. If you go ahead and apply the incorrect operation, you'd have a one plus one, which is a two, right? All over five. If you can actually kind of draw this out, you can see how this doesn't make sense. Like take a circle and break it up into five equal parts and then kind of shade two of those parts. That's equivalent to two fifths. Then go ahead and take a look at one half of a circle and one third of a circle. And remember adding is combining them. So if you take one third of a circle and you add it to one half of a circle, you're almost going to have that circle filled in, which makes my answer of five over six make sense. And then you can also see why two fifths does not make any sense at all. So the main thing when you're adding fractions with different denominators, go and obtain the common denominator and then you can apply the operations to the numerator while leaving the common denominator alone. All right, now this next example is probably one of the mistakes that probably infuriates me more than anything as a teacher. And the reason being is because it really is just a lack of understanding of what exactly we are doing. I know it's really popular when you look on short form videos, you can see there's a lot of these tips and tricks and those are great. You can actually do the math really, really quickly. The problem with them is students want to memorize them to be able to apply them, but they lack the understanding what and why they are doing. And there's no better 
better example than this example to illustrate that point. So when we have a fraction times a fraction, that's probably one of the easiest operations to do. But guess what I'll see happen time and time again? Students will apply cross multiplication, right? And what they'll do, so they'll apply the cross product. So they'll get like A times D and they'll just like write one of them in the numerator and then they'll do the cross product like B times C and they'll pick one of those in the denominator. And this is absolutely incorrect. Now the cross product is a tip and technique that we use when we're solving a proportion. But students just think of cross product, they hear the word product, and then they just think that whenever we're doing multiplications with fractions, that's what we wanna do. So please be very careful. And again, the best way I can explain this is again, just to use some numbers. Maybe you make this mistake, or you're kind of wondering, well, why does it not work? So let's go and take a look at exactly with some numbers of why this would not make sense. Let's just pretend I had a one half times another one half, right? Okay. Now, when we're thinking about multiplication with fractions, you can think of the word of. So like, for instance, if I was going to multiply one half times four, that's kind of like the same thing as like, what is one half of four? Now, hopefully you know the answer is two. So what if I said, what is one half of one half, right? What is half of one half? You would multiply them. But think about what is one half of one half? Well, it's one fourth, right? So if you apply the cross product, you're not going to get one fourth. So how can we get one fourth? That is simply by multiplying straight across numerator times numerator, and denominator times denominator. And you can see how that works. It is not the cross product. It is not like two times one, which is two, over one times two, which is two, right? Do not do that. So the cross product only works for proportions, but I just prefer not even to think about it. I prefer not even to go there. Just remember when you're multiplying fractions, multiply straight across. Now, the last one is a tricky one. You might actually be very familiar with all of these mistakes up to this point, but one of the ones that I think trips up mo the most amount of students, especially in the advanced classes, is going to be when I have A, divided by B, divided by C, right? Because most students are like familiar with the fraction, right? That's a comparison between two values. Like four divided by two makes sense, right? How many times is two divided into four? But what about when we have A divided by B divided by C? Now we have two fraction powers. How do we decide what is in the numerator and what is in the denominator? So what a lot of students will do is they'll simply say, well, remember whenever you divide by a fraction, that's gonna be the same thing as multiplying by reciprocal. So what a lot of students will do is they'll say, all right, let me rewrite this as an A times AC over B. So therefore that is now going to equal AAC over AB. And that is incorrect. Do not do that. What I want you to understand is we can also write this using division like A divided by B divided by C, right? But what I want you to understand here is when we do division like this, we work from left to right. This is A divided by B. And then that quotient is going to be divided by C. So the first two terms that are going to be grouped are going to be my A divided by my B, okay? So we have my A divided by B, that is gonna be divided by C. So how do we divide this fraction by C? Well, what you're gonna to wanna to do is rewrite C as a fraction. So what I can do here is I take A divided by B divided by C over one, right? Any number can always be rewritten as one. So you're right, you do wanna multiply it by its reciprocal. So that'd be A over B times A one over C. So therefore the correct answer in this case is going to be an A divided by a, B times C. I don't think numbers is going to make this mistake any more sense. So hopefully you can just remember when you have three terms, kind of follow that order of operations, maybe rewrite it horizontally so you can see exactly what division you're going to be applying first. Or always remember you can write an integer or expression or a term over one to have it as a fraction to rewrite it as the reciprocal. All right. And this last mistake is very much related to the previous one that um, I kind of did. But in this case, now we're going to have a variable in the denominator. Now remember that division property, right? If you remember that second example, we can not apply the division property when we have terms separated by addition and subtraction. So again, I have this A in the denominator and A in the numerator. That is simply going to be a one plus a B over X. And no, that is not correct. Do not do that. When you have this A, you can distribute this. Think about the distributive property. You can distribute that A to the A as well as the A to the B over X. So therefore that's going to be an A over A plus a BX over A, which you are going to get the one, right? Those A's are going to divide to one, but you have to make sure your BX is also being divided by an A. So therefore that's going to be one plus a BX all over an A. And again, like this can make some sense here. Even if you have A plus B over A, you know, we could think about this as like a two plus four divided by two, right? And if you're just to do your math across here, two plus two is going to be six over two, which is equal to a three right? That does not equal, if the twos divide out, a four, right? Do you notice how those are not the same? Just make sure that you either simplify your expression or whatever term, if it's you have a single term, and make sure you divide it into each of those terms that are separated by addition and subtraction in your numerator. Now, if you want to go and check out the top algebraic mistakes that I see students make inside the classroom, go ahead and check out the next video that I made for you here, or go ahead and check out more examples and resources I have for you down below. Cheers.